He said his time. What you say, man? I need idea. <laughs> Sometimes kick us off. Pat. People deserve to have right. their fate rewarded. <laughs> Um, so originally the film I was going to pick was not this one, and me, Rob, John, oh, and that? Rick were were chatting about the the new Space Jam coming out, and it sort of made me think maybe I should just pick this one, um, especially since it's got like a, a lot of meaning to me and Rob in particular, um, and it was I suppose a, a bit more fun, a bit more enjoyable, and less less heavy than the films that come before it, so. Homer, do you remember the way you acted at the party last night? The way I acted? So I said I must get out of these wet clothes and into a dry martini. <laughs> well said, oh, you yeah. puppet again. Thank you. Oh, good Lord, there's a fly in my drink. I put it there. You did? I slipped it into your glass as a gag. Pure hilarity. <laughs> Pure Homer. I pronounce it to be the most whimsical shape of the season. Oh, my oh, man. <laughs> Okay, Space Jam is terrible. Um, <laughs> maybe, you. maybe Alec just shouldn't talk and we'll just carry on. <laughs> That's fine. That's cool. I'll leave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I didn't even see what John scored. Oh, oh shit. Sorry, keep talking. I fear starting sentences. <laughs> Maybe you should introduce us again, Pat. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pat. I picked Space Jam. <laughs> there, Rob. I couldn't remember the basketball tip off. Actually, maybe it's called. I can't actually remember. I can't. Fuck. I couldn't. I couldn't remember what that was when you said you should kick us off. And I was. I, I, in my head, I was just like, oh, he should. He should have said the other one. <laughs> Eight point six. Shit me. I don't know. What do you mean? I think we, we all pretty much gave um, similar scores, I yeah. think. Alec, because he's soulless. <laughs> um, I'm, soulless. I must admit, I, I had to keep bumping my score because, I don't know, this this is a weird case where it's something that I loved as a kid and then I've watched it as an adult and it's actually got better because I think growing up, mm-hmm. growing up like really loving Looney Tunes and and being into basketball because of people like Michael Jordan is it's hard to watch it as a kid from that era and and not love it and there's always that fear when you go back to something like that that it's going to be shit as an adult but I got so much more out of it this time I mean I think I originally viewed it as just like a well just like a cartoon really and I didn't really think much of it but then I started thinking about what it was as a concept and how it's a, a Michael Jordan biopic but sort of with with the Looney Tunes universe as a backdrop and I think that's really clever and yeah I, I just really love the way that they told that story of Michael Jordan's actual career because um, Michael Jordan's career is weird anyway like I don't think there's any other sort of major athlete that's quit in his prime and then gone and played another sport that he wasn't very good at so telling that story and then telling a story of him getting back into basketball because of the Looney Tunes universe I think is really fucking cool. Hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue with you on this. So I'm um, like, you know, uh, <laughs> but um, these hands. Oh no, my nipples have been recorded. <laughs> <laughs> See, because for me, I I I've obviously I've I've watched this as a you know as a kid, and I've probably watched this a hundred fucking times, and literally until yesterday when you were telling me that. Um, this is all in aid of Michael Jordan's dad dying, and I was sort of like, "What? He died?" Like I, I just, I didn't, and I, I, I've literally never put it together. And I was sort of, I kind of had some, I, I, I kind of a similar thing with like Beautiful Mind, where I was sort of going, "I've got no idea about this person. This film didn't tell me about this person," and it's something that could have been established for me really really easily and i had no idea because the only implicate the only the only thing that is sort of pointing to it is right at the start michael jordan says um i'm really glad that my dad saw my last basketball game yeah like, <laughs> like what more do you 
want that why would anyone ever say that sentence if that person had not passed away okay well i'm really <laughs> glad that my dad saw my last jujitsu match i'm currently around his for a roast like it, it doesn't uh... tell me he's dead but you wouldn't. You, oh, his dad is roasting. But you wouldn't sit in front of reporters at a press conference. Yeah, you wouldn't say it. something. Hmm. And I, then. I, oh, oh. No, sorry, John. Go on. No, it's Ben's fault. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> fuck you, Ben. Uh, go ahead, John. Oh, that's fine. Go on, carry on. Oh. No, I, I, I think that like, you don't even need that line. I think even without that line. I mean, if, if his dad hadn't died, then what would have been the point of the prologue? And then his well, dad not being there after. Well, my thing is, like, I am genuinely glad my dad was there to see my last jiu-jitsu match. He's still alive. Right. You can, you can have that and still not... That doesn't mean he's dead. That could mean he's somewhere else. That could mean he's in Kentucky. That could mean he he's over someone else's house currently. Oh, like, right. you don't see enough of his home life... No, I, I, I get you trying to talk, John, but, you know, I, I don't care. Um, <laughs> no, go on. So after that, Dan was trying to come in as well. No, we don't care about Dan here. That's all right. No, like, you, the reason the reason I'm trying to interrupt is because you're blowing it way out of proportion. Like, there's a huge <laughs> difference. There's a huge difference between <laughs> being thankful for having the feeling of, I'm glad this happened, to expressing it to people for that specific purpose like i'm glad i'm i'm glad that this this move this movie chat happened. i'm glad that i could be here for this last movie chat i'm still alive yeah but one of you if you're talking like in front of people at, like i don't know say you're having like you're talking at your wedding and you're saying like oh, i'm really glad that this person was was there for this thing that happened it's probably likely that they're dead it, but it doesn't it doesn't confirm yeah. that he's dead. He could still be alive. And it's sort of all I wanted from this was I'm really glad that my dad saw my last basketball match before he died. Or like just a little sort of lingering kind of frame like on a photo frame of his dad. And I could go, Oh, he died then. I've watched this a hundred times. I never, ever, 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 ever put together that Michael Jordan's dad was dead when he filmed this. And I was like, oh, fuck. I only realised that Michael Jordan's dad was dead before, like, Rob told me yesterday. And I was like, oh, that puts ten times more significance on this. I didn't know. It's like... <laughs> but th th this, this is down to me not... Obviously, this is down to me not, like, researching this. No, <laughs> it's not about research. You just like yeah. understand just... the movie, because it's think... like it's like Rob said. There's absolutely no point to that prologue bit, and everything leading up to him saying that line about "I'm glad that my dad could see my last basketball game." Mm. There's no point to that at all. If like if that if he's just like, "Oh, I'm glad I could see my last basketball game. I'm gonna go have a beer with him now, though." Like, <laughs> but it, it, it doesn't. It... It doesn't confirm that he's dead, though. I never like. You don't. I'm obviously trying you, to go. Concrete Sorry. confirmation. There's enough there to tell you. Like, it, if if you're gonna pick at this, then <laughs> from now this, on, the, every movie we talk about, if there's something that isn't 100 percent confirmed, I'm gonna pick at it and throw it at you, and <laughs> you'll see how ridiculous this is. What you're saying. That's fine. I'll do it back at you. <laughs> but like, it, they they never they never said it in such a way that I was like, oh, Michael Jack, Michael Jack, <laughs> Michael Jordan's dad's dead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I, I think not bad storytelling. That's on you for not getting the correct context that was there. But the correct context that was there was not open to me as a kid. Well, or, I, I think there's three things there. Like, I, I think the first thing is that even without you noticing that, you still gave it ten for enjoyment. So that's a testament to how strong it can be, even without that. Hey, um, hey, hey! Don't use don't use my scores against me here. Well, Don't lose my body. <laughs> and then the second, the second thing, the second thing. I I don't know how you didn't pick up on it to be honest, because with if if you don't if you don't sort of read that his dad's dead from it, then there's no point to the prologue. There's no point to that that line in the press conference. Like all of that is just like I, I would be questioning. Okay, so if if he is alive then why was he in the prologue and then why didn't he show up later? Like, I, 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 I don't know why you never questioned that. I think that's I assume weird. he was in the enormous 
like just sort of stretch of land that is America. He was not available. You couldn't have him get over there. He's in America for like what two scenes? He's he's like not he's not relevant to even being there. I just assumed he was somewhere else. I literally never ever ever put together that he was dead. Oh, Sorry, him, being, him being dead is an enormous part of this where I was like, you know, that would have added a lot to these scenes, but I just I just never put that together at, until you said it <laughs> yesterday. And I was like, oh, they didn't establish that. They never put like a little photo of him and put like a little lingering little shot on him. I just I just never knew yeah. he was dead. And I was like, right, well, this was always like a little romp for me. I always just assumed they got like a famous athlete put the Looney Tunes dancing around him and went, oh, they made a movie. That's that's fun. But I never I, I never think... ever knew that it was the dad. Sorry, Emmanuel. Sorry, I know you I know you keep talking. I'm just gonna keep talking. I'm gonna keep talking until you stop talking. Hey. One of us dies. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep talking until one of us dies. <laughs> but, but I like... get where you're sorry. I get where you're coming from, um Alec. And I... what I would say there's there's two things to this that um I think two things that affect it. So, one, um, it is a, a form of indirect communication. So, it, it isn't direct. It is something that's indirect. That it's not the words he's saying. It's the it's it's the meta. It's the meta meaning underneath the comp uh, underneath the message he's actually saying and the words he's saying. So, yeah. it it makes sense, especially if it's not direct, that you might miss it. Also especially because you've watched it quite a lot. At the time, um, a lot of adults would have been aware, or fans of Michael Jordan, would have probably be, probably been aware that his dad had died. And since it was quite known at the time that this was, because it would have been in the news or something, maybe probably, that um, people watching the film, especially since they were just kind of doing a nod to it, and not trying to make it a real big plot of the film, it would be something that could be quite easy for some people to miss. But a lot of adults at the time would have been like, yeah, that was a good nod to just respect his dad. It's cool that they put that in there. Yeah. But yeah, and, and that's really all it was. It's just a nod to it. So they're not trying to make it that big. But like I said, it is indirect communication. And for even the little things like, there's been many situations where people have missed something that's been quite big because for them, it wasn't direct enough. I've been looking to this a lot recently, so I won't go into it too much, but I get where you're coming from. But it's also not that big of a thing. So it's, it's not that bad that you missed it. It's just more of a kind of respectful nod, I would say, to his dad. And, yeah. yeah. See, for I, me, I... I, I, I ended... Sorry, sorry, Rob, go on. I was just going to say, like, for me, I, I think it is quite a big thing to the film. Yes. Um, because, cause, I mean, we were talking about it yesterday and Alex said that, you know, he saw it as a, I don't know what you said now, like a, a film about a, a multi-millionaire's career in security, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> and and I said to him, like, it's, it's not that. It's about a guy who, you know, he's the best basketball player in the world, but he wants to live out his dad's dream. And then he learns that he's not very good at it. And even with everyone helping him, he's, he's not very good with it. And then he reconnects with what he is oh, yeah. through the Looney Tunes universe. And I think that's a really cool sure. concept. And also the third thing that I wanted to say just then as well is that I think them sort of setting it up as they did. And although, you know, it might have meant that you, you could have missed that his dad was dead. I actually think that that uncertainty is 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 really sensitively done. Um, because I was saying yesterday, like, if I'm talking to people who aren't you guys yeah. or who aren't Rachel's family, I still talk about my dad as if he's around. And so I think that that kind of uncertainty with Michael Jordan's dad, I really connect to that. And I think that's, yeah, I, I think it's really well done for that reason. Hmm. See, I think that's that's a nice little thing that you said about Michael Jordan doesn't draw attention to it. He often doesn't talk about it. And it's like, that. That's I, I, th I think it is really nice that he doesn't, that it's not it's not dwelt upon. It's not something that's drawn attention to. Michael Jordan never looks at the camera and goes, "By the way, my dad's dead." Like that that moment never happens. And I don't. I'm not saying that that moment should ever happen. But my point is, is that <clears throat> I'm the only one here 
who might be whose parents weren't like that into sport. My parents never well, bothered about this. I, I will never... say on that though. I will. I will say on that that Ben's on either, and yeah. Ben Ben inferred that his dad was dead. Yeah, yeah. but equally, you guys are older than me, and it's sort of I. I never saw this as anything other than this is a this is a film where Bugs Bunny will hang out with a big basketball player, and it's just a little fun story. And I was like, oh, okay, this is just a fun story. I never, I've, I've gone, I've gone like, I don't know, at least 25 years of my adult life thinking this is just a fun little story where Bugs Bunny teams up with Michael Jordan to have a basketball game. And the knowledge that it was actually about like insecurities coming from his dad playing baseball and he's playing basketball and he wants to get into baseball to kind of honor his dad and stuff. Those are all like really, really big things that I feel like could have been communicated really, really easily in the film that weren't and it's sort of like as someone who's not into sport as someone who doesn't know who michael jordan really even is outside of looney tunes these are things that could have easily been communicated that weren't that could have made me think of this as something other than a really fun looney tunes basketball romp and i've i've been scoring this as a fun looney tunes romp and it's now about a living up to a legacy story that I never knew was even there because I don't have that legacy of Michael Jordan and I kind of I kind of blame the film for not making it a little bit more explicit like like I said what? the only the only sort of sorry John I'll let you talk in a minute um <laughs> the only the only reference I have for this is that Michael Jordan says I'm really glad my dad saw my last game and that to me did not communicate that he was dead I assumed he was still about. I assumed he was like old, but he was still old enough to have and, and around to have seen his last game. I didn't know how recent this last game was. So for me, this is a the, like the, 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 that's still about. This happened really recently, and then Michael Jordan has a bit of career insecurity where he's like, "I want to play baseball because my dad played baseball." And I didn't realise that emotional significance, and that would have like drastically altered how I scored it. So the fact it's not even in the film, like enough for me as an outsider to even see. That's a that's a really big kind of takeaway for me. I don't know if I'm talking shit. You, Jonathan, back. Uh, yeah, I will say you are talking shit because um, oh. either me or my parents were ever into sports. I never knew Michael Jordan outside of the fact that he was like the best basketball player in the world. Until I watched it this time as an adult, I didn't know that his dad died while he was playing basketball and that he quit because of it. But seeing that, seeing that scene beforehand where they show him as a kid and then having that moment where he's like, I'm glad my dad could see my last game that was enough for me to go, oh, so his dad died and that's clearly made him decide that he wants to try and do what he said he would do as a kid and move on to baseball. So I think it's all there. And like, yes, you could like, regardless of, even if 99,000 people see it and understand it and then only one person doesn't, that is still technically a problem with the story not being clear enough. But personally i think it is clear enough like i know obviously you don't because you can see it but like it, i don't think you have to be like on the in circle of sports to have understood the context that they laid out for you yeah i, I just want to jump in quickly just before emmanuel does because like just off the back of that um you got to think of it as well in like the trade-off of if it was more obvious because like i said before like i mean it, it, you know you you've got a really tight-lipped person who you know he doesn't want to talk about his dad being dead and so yeah. his his kind of his coping mechanism is to try and go and do what his dad would have wanted him to do and i think that's 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 a really uh, well like i said it's a really sensitive way to to tell that story and i think it's a really nice portrayal of of him sort of you know trying to to come to terms with things without yeah. being able to talk about it so i think the trade off of that if it was more explicit and if you did know more about it i i don't think you would have got that sensitivity from it sorry emmanuel go on. <laughs> all right that, that's that's good at ads. um all i was going to say was um this was the to me this was the direction they chose to go with this kids 
family film. Now, yes, you do have the death of characters and stuff in, in, in some kind of kids' films and family films, but this, I, I assume that's not how they want it to go with this way. Even though it's in the story, the way it's sensitively handled, a kid could enjoy it without even thinking that, think, thinking that much about it. Even if they don't realize it, they literally just enjoy it as a fun Looney Tunes drum, even if they're, they're not aware of that. And that's one of the cool things I find about this film. You could enjoy it in both ways. There's just like you have many things in kind of um, Pixar films and other animations, the adults can take away things that the kids um, don't see. And I, I think this is one of those mo this is one of those things where they handle it sensitively, but at the same time, a lot of kids can just enjoy it for a, a, a fun cartoon without any more serious things if they didn't if they didn't notice that or pick that up, which I think is a, a cool layer to how they approach the film. Just thinking. I I, I think that is something as well because like. I still enjoy the movie. I'd still give it an absolute 10 for enjoyment. Like, but I think, <clears throat> I think like the knowledge that it is, it's not the film that I thought it was. Well, I don't but, think but, it is. The, it's still the film you thought it was. It, there's just another side to it. It doesn't mean that you it's, the it's, same. It's, it's not the film I thought it was because I thought the film I thought it was was because yeah, I thought the film was a, a fun romp where they, they like kind of stunt casted a, a basketball player to hang out with Bugs Bunny. Like, I, I was like, <laughs> as, as, as this film where they stunt casted an athlete to hang out with Bugs Bunny, this is fucking perfect. Shouldn't, it, shouldn't work as much as it should. We got to the credits and I was like, oh, wow. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say this has a lot of meaning. What's, what's, what's the what's the kind of through line here? Like, it's really important when you're struggling as a baseball player or when you're playing, when you're struggling in a career that you're not sure of, hang out with Bugs Bunny and you'll you'll find a way. Like, I'm, <laughs> do, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I feel, like my problem with what you're saying is that you can still enjoy the movie like that regardless, but also if that's what you got out of it, then you did not watch this movie like because it's like there's even w even without the context of his dad and everything there's definite like meaning behind what happens it's not just about him going and meeting Bugs Bunny and then being like oh cool I'll just go back to what I'm good at like that that is I'm, not I'm honestly, I'm honestly being a little bit disingenuous in what I'm saying because it's, it's for like comedic value but all I understood the movie to be was He's he he's quit being bar he's quit doing basketball. He's gonna get into baseball. He's not very good at baseball. He reconnects with basketball through the Looney Tunes, and that's the story. And I was like, oh okay, that that's what I understood the film to be. And without that in with, with without that understanding that they made it after Michael, J uh, I keep calling him Michael Jackson. Fuck. <laughs> Michael, without the understanding that Michael Jordan's dad died, and that's why he wanted to get into baseball. And the the significance is that it's not his father. He, he is not his father. He is him, and he can't become his father by doing baseball. He can only become him by being by doing basketball. That knowledge is lost on me because I didn't have the understanding that his dad died before, and there wasn't strong enough showing of it. There wasn't strong enough sort of depiction of it, and all I all I needed was a little line. All I needed was a little shot, a little lingering shot on a photo, that would have done that for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not I'm not trying to be disingenuous in my reading of the film. My reading of the film is that there's no there's nothing to indicate to me if I don't know already that Michael Jackson's dad. Michael Jordan's dad died. <laughs> it would drastically affect the, the understanding of this film for me. But I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm really going to try and stop calling him Michael Jackson's dad. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I really don't feel like they... I, 
you know, and it's not like it's a kid's film and you can't go, oh, we can't show it in a kid's film and you're like, oh, yeah, because Bambi, Finding Nemo, Land Before Time, Lion King, you really can't depict the parents' death. <laughs> and it's sort of like, you, 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 could, you could just say something and Michael... Ah! Michael <laughs> Jordan, Michael Jordan saying, I'm really glad my dad got to see my last basketball match before he died. Or... Just lingering on a photo frame. That's the only. That's that's one of the only two things I want from this to do. And they'd be they'd, they'd both be really really easy to do. But I just I just uh, after a hundred times of seeing this, I've never ever 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 picked up on that being the subtext for it. And that's drastically made me misunderstand the film. And I think if that's a the subtext of the film that I'm supposed to be taking this away from, it's not done that. I've always thought that this was a fun little romp with Bugs Bunny. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not trying to be disingenuous here. Like, I yeah, don't think it's in yeah, the film. Uh, stop talking. Sorry, John. You're, oh, you're, I'm gonna stop talking. You're literally just repeating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> like... Yeah, you're not. I'm not. Not. not no one seems to be understanding what I'm saying. That's why I'm repeating myself. Because you're talking shit. Because the two things that oh. I will take from what you just said is... Actually, I've forgotten the second one, so I'm going to go... <laughs> 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 you went on for far too fucking long. Um, oh. All the problems that you're saying that you have with like not knowing the context of his dad being dead, saying the things like not getting the importance of him going to baseball and stuff like that, like while yes him being dead makes it more important that is all still there like that that pro that prologue scene where he's talking to his dad about baseball and you clearly get the in like you clearly get the message that his dad is either a baseball player or is like a big fan of baseball and they make that agreement like obviously he's just a kid but whatever um that's already the significance of him deciding to go to baseball. Like, yes, him, his dad dying makes it more important and more emotional and stuff. But like, you're saying that you have a problem with that not being there, but it's literally there. Like, yeah, make the argument about whether it's good, like they show it good enough for him to die or not. But oh, that was it. That was the second thing I was going to say. Um, you comparing it to like Bambi and Nemo and stuff like that is a completely unfair comparison because those are all fictional characters. This is a movie about a real person and his real dad died. So, again, coming back to what Rob was saying about the sensitivity of it, having him go, oh, I'm really glad that my dad got to see the last game that I played before he died just would not add to this. Like, it detracts from it, if anything. I don't know if I agree with that because I feel like that would have kind of spelled it out, like just. But that's that's the point, though, isn't it? Like, I mean, there's 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 a line where it it could have been spelled out too much, that's and okay. I think actually having that uncertainty to it is it actually makes it a lot richer. And then also as well, I think something that's being missed is that it is a family film, and to be a decent family film, you've got to offer something different for the kids to the adults, and I think it does that perfectly by having this subtext. I really don't think. The thing I'm I'm asking for destroys it being a family film. I'm literally asking for like a photo of the actor playing Michael Jordan's dad. I did it that time. I'm asking for a photo of Michael Jordan's dad being lingered on a little bit, and I'd have gone, "Oh, he's dead then." But my argument to that would be is that if him saying I'm really glad that my dad got to see my last basketball game wasn't enough for you, I don't see how that would have been. <laughs> Yeah, because that's that's still subtext. Like it doesn't it doesn't tell me it's he's dead though. It does not it does not confirm to me that he is dead. Lingering on a picture. Yeah, lingering on a picture will at least cinematically tell me he's a he's dead. No, no, it doesn't. It could mean if it does. No, it doesn't. You're going on about how it's not given enough like confirmation that he could be anywhere else doing any other thing. Lingering on a photo does not 100% mean someone is dead. I'm not yeah this this is what I mean though because cinematically if you if you linger on someone's photo frame I can go why are you lingering on that for oh he's dead. I don't want Michael Jordan showing me a death certificate. I just want it to be like a little bit more 
Oh, okay. No worries. If, but if you didn't ask the question of why he was in the prologue and why they set that whole thing up for him to never turn up again, and if you didn't ask the question of why he said that in the press conference, I don't see why you would have asked it the third time. Hmm. I just, I just don't, I, I just, I literally just assumed he was in a different bit of America. I just didn't think but, but, he was ever in that. I, I, it, it literally never connected to me that he was dead. And him being dead changed the whole thing for me. And the, the only reference we get to it doesn't confirm to me that he's dead. So I'm like, right, well, this changes the entire film for me. Well, that's what I'm saying, though, because, I mean, I, I think if if what was already done didn't do that for you, I don't see how Lindgren on a photo frame would, would do that for you. And if he did... <laughs> But the thing is, well, that's the thing. Like, it's just another subtle thing. And if you'd have done any more than that, then that would have been too much, I think. I think if a camera focused on it, I'd have gone, ah! So I'll do that for a bit longer. Ah! I, I just... oh, Emmanuel wants to come in. <laughs> Sorry, Emmanuel. Sorry, Emmanuel. Do it. That's all right. I, I was going to, I was just going to say, um, I do understand why it, it, it means a lot to you. Um, I do think for a time sake, though, we probably should um, revisit this in the chat because <laughs> it's, 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 it's half an hour to midnight, so we might not get through a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, we've been on this for about an hour. Uh, pretty, sorry. Pretty fair. <laughs> this, this is where I'm on. Okay. but continue. <laughs> oh, dear. That's okay, move one, on. One, one thing that um, impressed me about the film at the time and still stands up for me now is in terms of production, how well they meshed live and the cartoon together. It, it, I, I thought the, the kind of juxtaposition was just going to be too, um, like too much, too, not, yeah, too much when I came back to watch as an adult. But then I was like, actually, this is this this is still works. And they did kind of the weird kind of effects, a stretchy arm that folded up into a ball, and the kind of um, kind of craziness of it or out there of it messed well with the the whole aspect of Looney Tunes itself. So watching it again, I thought, you know what, they 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 did pretty decent for at the time. Um, because seeing, seeing that kind of stuff, I've, since then, we could see good examples and bad examples of it. And I think they did well, considering. Yeah, I have to admit, I think I, I, think I underscored it a little bit on production at first, because there, there are a few bits where you raise an eyebrow. Like one that comes to mind is when Michael Jordan is squashed into a basketball. I was kind of oh. looking at the basketball and I was like, oh, no, that's, a, that's a bit rough. And then... I had to kind of remind myself later on that this is a whole film made in 1996 where they where they've got live action alongside cartoon and and that's the one bit that I'm thinking of, so I can't really be too harsh on it. Equally, equally, Stan being inflated into a that's giant one, yeah. balloon. That's that is another one. Um, I I don't know. I feel like these are things that are also that you know they're not things I want to score any highly or any. any any highly, that's a word. <coughs> Any higher than a seven. <laughs> I think it's good for the time, but I don't think it holds up that well. I mean, like, obviously we all rate things in different ways, but for me personally, I feel like, like whether it stands up the test of time definitely is important, but I do feel, feel like it's, it's more important to, like, remember when it was made and, like, how well it how good it was like at the time but i i agree with the manual that i think most of it holds up really well like the i don't think the stand bit is that bad but the basketball bit is like pretty awful when you look at it but <laughs> like again like rob said for that to be like the one thing that kind of stands out when you're literally like he would have just been had a green screen around him the whole time mm. like it's pretty fucking good <laughs> yeah i think i think considering that Close Encounters was made, what, a year after this? No, it was made 20 years before. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably how much research I'm willing to do. Well, again, Stan has no reason to look as shit as he does, anyway. 
<laughs> There's no <laughs> any sense at all. Your mum doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> no, sorry. Just ignore me. I'm not on the mic any sense. <laughs> oh, well, now it's just awkward. Someone <laughs> I'm still laughing. All right. In Stop terms of in terms of acting, um, I mean the voice acting is still as good as it usually is for the other characters. But what about everyone else? All the human actors? Oh, they're awful. They're all awful. They're all right. athletes. That's why they're awful. No, I wouldn't say they're all awful. I mean the um, I think I think Michael Jordan was well. He's very obviously not an actor, but I don't think he was awful. I think Bill Murray's really good, and mm. Wayne Knight was really good as well. Um, like the the other mm. five, the other five basketball players. Well, I don't know. I d- I don't think they're terrible. I think um, well, it's, it's the same with with Michael Jordan really. Like it's it's very obvious that they're athletes and they're not actors. But I think Muggsy Bogues was was really enjoyable to watch. He's the um, short one. Rob. Yeah. Um, going on that with, with their sort of acting quality. Do you remember the um bit in the last dance where they touched on that where they filmed the entire thing in like five or six weeks in the off season yeah yeah when they was so, all in yeah oh. so like yeah. they didn't um they didn't have any sort of acting training they were just approached like do you want to make this film and they're like yeah sure why not <laughs> I, i've turned into gary i, I do realize <laughs> I, th- I think there's there's like a point where they're in the psychiatrist office and Wayne Knight is on the is on the uh, psychiatrist couch, and he's like, and sorry, the psychiatrist is going like, "Do you have any problems performing outside of basketball?" And he's got, and Wayne Knight turns around, he's got the biggest fucking smile on his face, and he goes, "No," and I was like, "Yeah, I didn't buy that," <laughs> but. I also kind of had that with Michael Jordan throughout, where like they're just kind of hanging out with Bugs Bunny, and then Michael Jackson goes. What's going on here? And I was like, ah. You said Michael Jackson here. But when he smiled and said, what? No, I just took that as like a, just a funny com- comedic way of him actually doing that. It's just, it's not realistic. It's kind of over the top kind of, it's, it's not it, slapstick it, comedy, but it's kind of close to that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny, it's a funny little exchange, but I'm sort of like, <laughs> that would have been a lot better if you got an actual like kind of actor to do that. I get you can't do an actual actor, but I also didn't write the film about basketball, so yeah. I don't know. I think I I found it funny enough because like this the exact way he was doing, I was happy with because of the kind of the in joke for adults. It's just like oh, Joe's performing. Oh, it's just like what? No, like basically, I'm I'm good in bed. Man, hush. <laughs> I just think if I was a basketball player, I was on this couch and then someone was like, Are you performing poorly outside of anywhere but a basketball? And you kind of got to go, No! And it's like, Why are you smiling? Like, I just, I, just, oh, I, just, I, wasn't, I wasn't that impressed with it. I was sort of like, Just make him look a bit angry, make him look a bit, I don't know. But he's, he's just smiling, and I was like, Oh, all right, well. I mean, who says he was angry? He might have literally been amused by the fact that this guy said it. He's like, what? No. Like, well, he was like, yeah. no! And I was like, oh, okay, well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> humans aren't black and white, and they don't just feel one emotion at once. It's funny, that. Well, you know, we can we can apply that to a lot of things, can't we? Yeah, like being drunk on a call when it's not really helpful, is well, it? Well, I can leave <laughs> if you want. I mean, it doesn't matter now. We've already been here for almost two hours. Well, that's fine. <laughs> You've caused chaos with Space Jam, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Pan's not here. <laughs> that's okay, if I'm making things a bit frosty, no worries. Um. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what else? I see look at the Space Jam shit. No. 
It's not. Mm-hmm. I actually quite like it. I'm just trying to be controversial. Um, I like the in oh in terms of impact. Um, I know for for me anyway. I think I really like basketball. And I played a lot of basketball growing up. Um, same over here in when I was in Sydney, Russell. And that 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 side of it, I I I really like that. But also in terms of just Looney Tunes, real life action film, to me it had a good impact in the industry itself, showing that this thing can be done well. It can be done in a kids family friendly form and pulled off and it it, I think when a big company does like something like that that's not done that often and they do it well I think it opens the door for other kind of big studios to go yeah actually we could probably do something like this again as well I mean there were some bad examples in the past but we can do this good I think it was just a good example of what it was and I think that itself was a good impact and the, the industry and myself and people growing up, yeah. I think the thing for me with Impact and the, the reason that I gave it 10 was that I, I always think back to like when I was a kid and my dad used to tell me about all these footballers that he idolised as a kid. He used to tell me about like Stanley Matthews and Jimmy Greaves and whoever. And I, I know who they are because he told me about them, but I could never get a feel of who they were, like how they played and, and that kind of thing. And I think his attitude to, towards like watching sport that had already happened was like, it's history, so why do you want to bother? And I, I kind of, I kind of agree with that because I think uh, sort of you know a, an essential part of sport is the tension of it of not knowing who's going to win and there being some stakes to it and that kind of thing. So I, I, I mm. find watching old sport really dull. Um, and I think what, what's really good with Space Jam is it gives you a vehicle to share sport that's happened. With, with people who are younger. So, I mean, I, I fully believe that, like, when I have kids, I'll be showing them this film and telling them who Michael Jordan is and and, and that kind of thing in a way that, you, you, well, previous generations haven't been able to do because no other films like this exist. And I also think mm. that the film being a little bit vague with sort of, like, the details around everything, that adds to it because then it becomes a conversation that you can have with, with your kids. And I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. I really, I really will. Oh, sorry, Pat. I didn't mean to just continue. No, it's okay. You don't talk much. I talk too much. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, like, I think the impact for me was similarish to to Rob, except like I sort of didn't have those conversations with my dad because my dad was pretty much an idiot where sports are concerned. <laughs> um, like he, he'd, he'd show interest but he'd know literally nothing about it it's still the case now but um, I generally did a lot of research by myself even as like a five or six year old and um, I remember I think I was I, th- I think I was about six when I f- first sort of discovered basketball so it was a little bit before um, Space Jam I was like oh this this looks quite cool and I sort of never went back to it. And then um, my mum bought me the VHS and I sat down and watched it. And it sort of it sort of opened a new world for me. So like Michael Jordan ended up becoming like a superhero for me, like say Iron Man is to kids now. Like, um, and then that sort of just spawned my love for the sport which I think is like a pretty cool thing to to have accomplished. Yeah, I have a similar thing because I I think Space Jam probably was my sort of introduction into basketball. And then I always remember like, I remember like it was yesterday. So there was one night, it it was when, it was when Channel 5 used to have the rights to the NBA. And so it would have been probably when we were like, I don't know, maybe like seven or something like that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I remember going to bed and it would have been fairly early because I would have been about seven. And I remember hearing basketball in the front room. I think like my dad must have been like flicking through channels and then he came on to channel five and just left it on for a bit. So I remember hearing that there was basketball and I remember going into the front room 
and my mum and dad being like no you need to be in bed like why are you up kind of thing and I just remember throwing this massive tantrum because I wanted to watch basketball and I'm pretty sure that's the first match I ever watched and it was because I recognized the sounds from Space Jam. Oh nice I didn't think of I, I kind of forgot how it would be different in the different in the two countries I mean it's obvious but I wasn't thinking about it before because growing up in America it it was huge, of course, and Michael Jordan was huge. So I think all of my friends and all of the kids knew Michael Jordan. We played basketball a lot, just like a lot of kids did um, there in America, just like kids here would play football. Like that was, that and I guess American football were like the two biggest sports. Baseball, it wasn't as big. I, it still was big, but you, you knew of baseball, you just didn't really follow too many people in baseball, except baseball. maybe some... Baseball was yeah. tended to be big in certain communities. It wasn't like a, a massive... Even though it was, it's considered like uh, America's pastime, it's not widely as enjoyed as the NFL or the NBA. Exactly. Thanks. You put it perfectly. <laughs> uh, I could say it like that, but that's exactly what it was. <laughs> Because it's a boring sport to watch, so not many people do. Hey, you're wrong, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, think... you're all wrong. That's literally why not many people watch it because it's it's boring to watch. It's fun to play. It's not entertaining to watch for most people. <laughs> well, well, that's just yeah. subjective. Like, obviously, you've got with the NFL, you've got the aggressiveness of it, and then with the same with basketball, really. Like, even though there's not any like physical contact the aggression and the skill involved is like much more interesting in general whereas like obviously i'm being like this this is hyperbole like i'm i'm not 100 percent serious about this but baseball is literally just hitting a hitting a ball with a stick like when you when you pin it down to what it is it's not it's basically very... pinata well oh, hey i think if you if you if you plug into it you'll get more out of it yeah, but kind of like what John was saying, there's a lot of people, or if I explain it this way, in America, a lot of people who aren't interested in sport at all will sit down and watch an NFL game or watch a basketball game. Like the Super Bowl is literally a pastime American event where your grandmas, your aunties, any everyone who has no interest in sport finds it boring will actually find time to sit down and watch it where not many people in America do that for baseball unless they're really interested in it or they, they have the trading cards and all that kind of stuff. It's still a great sport. It's just that people play it, but they don't follow it as much. Probably the, it's probably because of the number of games in the season as well, because it is quite a, quite a slog. Hmm. Yeah, true. I gotta yeah. say, I, I remember when Rob was showing me NFL, and NFL they might score a goal once every day. I don't know, um, but like <laughs> basketball, they were just scoring three points every second, and I was like, and I, I just couldn't understand. I don't know. I, I, I was just so, you know, I was just so conditioned to watching NFL. And um, but yeah, That's I think right. um, you know what I mean. Like basketball, is so fast paced, and I was just kind of yeah. You do have to acclimatize to it a little bit. I think it's the yeah. only sport where people score and then don't celebrate. I think I think it was I think it was just watching mm. someone sort of just struggle and struggle and put their life into it, and I like, just just shit out a whole whole roast chicken and just just get there and i was like <laughs> oh my god i fucking got there and then just someone just goes hey it's got three points hey it's got three points hey it's got three points and i was like wow basketball's weird i just didn't get it it's, it's an interesting one but i think but yeah my main point was that it's 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 kind of cool seeing how we experienced it it was still had a lot of impact for us but we experienced it slightly differently and it and it showed uh, some of you guys basketball for the first time or kind of got an interest in that. It had a big impact on you. And I just find that really cool. Mm. It still impacted us both in a big way. 
even though we're coming from two different upbringings in two different countries. So, yeah, I found that really cool. Uh, I always say latest. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I I always say latest something. I don't know if you noticed it, Emmanuel, but the the baseball team that Michael Jordan played for is from your hometown. Yeah. um, Wait. (laughs) Wait, which state was it? Was it? It's it's the Birmingham Barons that he played. Yeah, for. it was. Yeah, mm. I forgot. I I I saw that. I was like, oh, I don't know. And then <laughs> just, it, but I think it's because they're they're not a, a good a great team. Yeah, it's minor went, league, like, isn't it? Ah, oh, he went to play. Okay, I get. It. He's just oh, okay, cool. And then I just stopped thinking about it. I know, like <laughs> but the, it's the... true. I don't, I don't know if I'm right, but like Pat will tell me if I'm wrong or not. <laughs> I, I made the developmental team for the for the Chicago White Sox, or is it the Black Sox? No, there's no Black Sox. Um, it is White Sox. <laughs> yeah, so I believe that they're, they're the minor league affiliate for the White Sox. Yeah. yeah. So he but, stayed in Chicago, really. But yeah. Um, mm. What was funny about this? Because this is also something else that we saw from um, the Last Dance was. So when he started leaning towards going back to playing basketball, he actually started getting good at baseball, <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't that far away from a major league call up, which I found hilarious. To be, to be absolutely fair to Michael hmm. Jordan, I can't imagine going to something where you score as frequently as you do in basketball, and going, "Hey, let's do baseball where you you never score ever." Like you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's gotta be like you, the you, slowest game ever created by man. Like you, you say that, but like in in school growing up, I played rugby, basketball, um cricket, which is the slowest, but I have a great appreciation. Oh, don't, of cricket. don't start him off again, please. I played I played chess. <laughs> As a kid, I played chess and it was brilliant. I was, I was a, we're I was talking a about chess sports. Prop. We're talking about sports, switching from different sports. And I think, obviously, one of his main reasons for really getting into baseball was to not to his dad. But at the same time, you can still enjoy things out of many different types of sport. It just depends on you as the person. And I would, I enjoyed... To be honest, I enjoyed baseball as much as I enjoyed basketball. And I enjoyed cricket as well quite a lot, even though it's a, it's a slightly different flow. There was just different things to enjoy from each game that you don't have in each game because they're that different. So I think you can still really enjoy another game, even when it's a completely different flow and a completely different type of sport. Because mm. in the, the day, you're still using your physical prowess in a different way and that's the whole thing that's beautiful about sport so yeah. that's, what, that's what i'm saying i can see why he struggled so much because basketball is so fast and baseball is just a lot of a lot of weight and it's, <laughs> it's, it's so i mean that was also something that the film did quite well though is um as i mean obviously michael jordan is a massive name and and whatever else and I think to somebody who didn't know who Michael Jordan was beforehand, they did a really good job of of depicting him being shit at baseball, but still being a massive name because of the people <laughs> helping him and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, that I thought was that was really well done as well. That was something I really got. I really understood he was shit at baseball. Um, just moving downstairs. I'll be within a sec. Are you going to say something, Pat? Yeah, I'm just looking at the um, at the score chart. Like, purpose was a difficult difficult one to score. I think. Well, for me, it. Is... Oh, sorry, John. No, I was just going to say. I feel like purpose. Like, this is one of the for me anyway. It's one of the easiest movies to score for purpose because basically what we talked about already. Like the the dynamic between like the family friendly part of the movie and then like the stuff that they put in for adults and just the the story weaved throughout it that isn't just like you know fun um i think it does really well purpose-wise 
Do you know what? I'm I'm gonna up my score for purpose. I'm gonna change it to a ten. So I think um everything that I was saying before about how it being a family film, so you know, you, you need two layers to it. I think I think I can't really say that I loved it as a kid and then watched it as an adult and it got better and then give it any less than ten for purpose, really. Yeah. I think it's a nine for purpose. Yeah. It was brilliant by it so, itself, and then you gave me extra. It was terrible. <laughs> the the extra is optional. You don't have to. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can make someone's sad be optional. Well, let's, you did. <laughs> let's get off the, the tangent about his dad for now. Let's stop talking about the main thing about the film for now. That's okay. I get it. <laughs> no, I would need to... Never mind. I'm glad this film exists. That's no, okay. I'm, I'm bringing it down. I'll come off. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad this film exists. Like, it, it's just one of those things. You're just really glad to have watched and glad to have seen and glad it was made and done in the way it was. Yeah. I think that's another thing as well, because I mean, you know, as, as basketball fans, there's always the debate of who the best ever is. And it always seems to be between mm. sort of Michael Jordan, LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. And the, the argument against, well, I don't know if it is against actually, but, but one of the arguments you often hear is that, you know, Michael Jordan didn't even play through his peak. And it's, it's kind of like, what would have happened if he did play through his peak? Like, would he have had three more championships? Would he have bombed or, or what? But I think the, the other side of that is, you know, if, if he played through his peak, then Space Jam wouldn't exist, which is arguably more important than a few more rings, I'd say. Yeah. I've got, I got to say, in the, in the debate of uh, who is the better basketball player, I can tell you that my metric would be having a Looney Tunes tie-in. So Michael Jordan would automatically win. <laughs> That does put him level with LeBron James now. Well, fuck LeBron James. <laughs> oh. What? Wait, you, you, wait, you could, we could talk about that for a very long time. but Yeah, but this, is not, say, this is not the time for debating that. <laughs> it's not the time to talk about anything, Pat. I understand. Well, we're having this debate and Ben and John are sat, sat there like, I really don't want to talk about sport. So <laughs> I'm not no, going I also to don't want to talk about that. sport, but here we are. I, I would just add to that, uh, I think you guys can agree as well, that there are many greats, and it's also subjective to where people came from as well, because obviously some people came from very low down in terms of not having much chance of success, and some people had a better head start, but otherwise people still really performed well considering many things, and I think, yeah, yeah. I don't know what point I was going to make there, but, <laughs> but that's all I was going to say. Um, I think I think obvious. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to retread old ground, but I uh, I do think impact kind of drops for me for obvious reasons. Um, As a man named. Billiam Shakespeare once said, "Brevity is a soul of wit." <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've already I've already said my thing. Uh, have anyone got anything else to add? I'm really glad there were no chapter cards. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think chapter cards would have would have possibly ruined the whole thing. That's not a um, popular thing, though, to be honest. Yeah. Um, that's my thing. Um, ben and John, anything else from you guys? Cool. Um, Alec, what's your film? What's my film? My film? Oh, my film. My film is uh, my film, isn't it? Um, it's, a, it's a bat film, yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is the first this is the first film of bad film round TM trademark by someone. Um, but uh, but yeah, for bad bad film round, I think will be opened by my film, possibly. Yeah. 
Go on, get round to it. Oh, sorry, no, my bad film, my bad film. <laughs> my bad film. I think we should we should open with a, a thing with this. So I think we should... No, shut up. Um, <laughs> I think we should have uh, a little thing where we say, my bad film is... My name is Ben Hyundorf. And... Oh, fucking hell. Okay. My name is Alec Pittman, and my, my bad film is The Room. The Room can be found. Um, oh. It can be found in its entirety nowhere, unless Rob wants to uh, provide a link for The Room. Um, it's terrible. It's really bad. It's a, it's a bad film. I think this is for... Uh, this, is, this is a kind of... Uh, this is kind of just to sort of add, add to the kind of fun you can get from criticising films. Um, that, that, that film is, is, oh my goodness. Oh, it's god awful. It's the worst film I've ever seen. Um, YouTube. I mean, it's, it, it, I mean, it's not... YouTube, it's, nice, thanks. It, I mean, it could be worse. It could be, it could be The Bridge to Terabithia. Wait. It could be, uh, it could be Sonic the Hedgehog. It could be... Uh, it couldn't be Blues Brothers two thousand. That's actually the worst film I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but but the room the room's really bad. The room's, the room's really bad. It's not on YouTube, and I don't want you to look for it. Uh, but Rob Rob will provide a a link for you to see the room. There's a lot of mythology around the room. So before before you before you judge it with your uh, with your uh, judgmental basketball minds, um, you should you should. Yeah, just just watch the room. Um, I think we've all seen it though, haven't we? No, no one's seen it. <clears throat> no one's seen it. Uh, known to man. Um, it's for the best, really, because uh, it's really bad. It's terrible. It's a terrible film. Um, right, I'm gonna come off now. Oh, okay. Well, my film is the room, and um, see you, later, guys. you should watch it. Uh, bye, right, Pat. See you, Pat. <laughs>